Hello friends, my name is AJ and welcome to the second Framework Friday, where every Friday I teach you a new framework in Swift and how to use it. Today we're going to be going over the popover framework and the popover framework allows us to have little pop-up views and drop down menus in your iOS app. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, so this is the GitHub page for the popover library. You can see here it is written in pure Swift and it is made by this person, um, Corn 8823 And uh, definitely, if you like this framework after we use it and you want to start it, you should definitely start it so that the uh, person, you can kind of give a little bit of credit to the person who made it. All right, so down here, there's a little bit of an animation of the different uses that you can have in your pop in your pop down menu. So you can see that you have these little, you can do it up, you can do it downward, and you have some simple usage instructions as well as uh, different ways to add some custom options, okay? So we're going to be going over kind of the basics in both how to install this and then also how to add a very simple pop-up view onto your app. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to install this using CocoaPods. So in order to install a framework, you first have to create the project. So I'm going to create a new Xcode project and this will be a single view application and I can just call this maybe um, like pop over popover demo, and I can save this to my desktop. All right, so this is the popover demo Xcode um, project. So now what we're going to do in order to install our framework is we're going to completely quit out of Xcode. So Xcode and then quit Xcode, or you can do command Q. After that, what you want to do is you want to locate the folder where your project is stored in. When you click it, you will have the Xcode project, as well as four other folders. You want to go to this directory and right click on it. And then on the bottom, you can click a new terminal at folder. And what this will allow us to do is it will open a new terminal window that is navigated to this particular folder. If you don't already have CocoaPods installed, you can definitely check out my, my one of my previous videos where I talk about CocoaPods and how to install it. But very simply to install it, if you don't already have it, is to type in sudo gem install CocoaPods right here. This command will install CocoaPods onto your computer. Now, when you press enter, there may it may ask you for a password. So when you're typing in your password, you won't actually be able to see what you're typing in. So you wanna make sure that when you're typing your password, that you um, make sure that you're typing it correctly with the proper cases and then not making a typo, etc. Once you're done typing in your password, which by the way is your computer login password and you click enter, CocoaPods will install. Once you have CocoaPods installed, and also I wanna mention that when you're installing CocoaPods, make sure to open a new terminal window where, so you can go under shell and click new window with profile basic. You want it to basically be here where it is at your root directory and not actually um, inside of a folder. You could see up here, it should say your username of your actual computer rather than a folder when you're installing CocoaPods. So then after that, you wanna to navigate to your terminal where it is set to that particular folder. And then you wanna type in pod, and um, I may make this a little bit bigger so you can actually see what I'm doing here. Uh, let me just expand this. All right, that, that may be a little bit easier to see. So what you wanna do is you want to type in into your command pod init, just like this and click enter. And what this does is it will create a pod file for us so that we can type in what pod we want to install. And you know that it's done running when you now have a second line, again, a second blank line. So now you can just move your terminal window off to the side and open up your folder. And you will see here that you have this pod file. You will have this pod file right here. So you can open the pod file and go, oh gosh, this is also quite small. Let me make it a little bit bigger. There we go. So in order to install your pod underneath where it, there's the pound symbol, number symbol, or hashtag, whatever you call it, um, and then here it says pods for popover demo. Underneath this, what you want to type in 
is you want to type in pod, which is lowercase. It may auto complete to, up, uh, to uppercase, but you want it to stay lowercase like this. And then single quote popover with a capital P, single quote, and that is pretty much all you need. I don't believe that you need a semicolon. Yep, that is it. You just do po uh, pod, single quote, popover, single quote, just like that. That's all you have to do. Now you can click Command S to save your pod file and then Command Q to close it. Now that you have closed your pod file and make sure that Xcode is completely closed for the next step, then underneath where you typed in pod in it, you will type in pod install. And what pod install will do is it will install our dependency. So you can see over here, it says installing popover and then it installs it. And when it's done, you will see a new blank line again. All right, so that is all that you need to do within the terminal. And now you, we can open up Xcode again. But before we do that, so I'm going to close out of my terminal. You will now notice inside of my folder, you now have this new thing called popover.xc workspace. So now not only do you have an um, Xcode project file, it is now generated in XC workspace file. Now, when you're actually editing your project and you're working on your app, you want to open your project using the XC workspace file rather than the Xcode project file. So I'm going to double click on XC workspace and Xcode should open up. Now you'll see on the side here, you have two little icons. You have your icon for pods and then you have an icon for your main app. If you expand these directories here and here, you will be back to the same kind of files that you had in, you know, normally inside of a normal Xcode project. All right, so now I'm going to go over to my main.storyboard. And inside of my main.storyboard, just for now, I'm going to add a button. So I'm going to click the plus button and I'm going to add a button. Now you don't necessarily need to have, you know, a button, you could have something else but you want to create some sort of thing that's able to trigger an action so that the pop-up view will be able to show on your screen. And a button is pretty much the most intuitive way in this example for me to show it because you can actually trigger an action using a button. But you know, if you had anything else that you wanted to have your pop-up do, you can easily do it in, any, um, in anything. It's actually not that bad. So I can just see here, show pop-over. And I'm going to center this. I will constrain this top space to safe area and center horizontally. Again, constraints don't necessarily matter, but I'm just simply doing that for good practice and so that I can run it on any of my devices. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on these lines next to my pane, and I'm going to click on assistant to open the assistant editor. And the assistant editor will open my code file next to my storyboard so that I can connect my elements from my storyboard to my code. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, or if you don't have a right click on your mouse, you're using uh, the magic mouse, for example, you can use control click, but you want to control click and drag, or, or you want to right click and drag from your button over to your code. And I'm going to drag it down here. My connection will be type action and the name will be button pressed. So now this IB action function will run anytime my button is pressed. So I'm going to close out of my assistant editor and open my view controller so that you can see my code. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger again so that you can see it. All right, so now what do I need to do? Well, the first thing I need to do is I need to import popover. So I'm going to say import popover. And what import popover will allow me to do is access all of the popover classes, methods, and everything that we need to use. All right, so now the first thing that I need to do is I need to determine a point at where, a specific coordinate point, that should be the origin of my popover. And what do I mean by that? I mean that I need a specific part where the popover actually comes from rather than like an origin point of where it should appear, but rather where it, where the actual popover like uh, came out of. That is what we are trying to uh, find here. So what I can do is I can say, um, let, 
or origin point. Again, I'm using the word origin, but be be careful because origin, you know, oftentimes means like the zero zero point or the location. It's not necessarily that. It's more the point where it originated from. So I could say origin point equals, and this needs to be a CG point, just like that. And then I can have open parentheses, and I can scroll down and choose my constructor that has an X and a Y coordinate. Now I want my origin point to actually be the center of my button. So in order to make it the center of my button, I need to say sender, right, dot. Now, if you notice, my sender here is actually in any. So I want to see if I can change this to a UI button type right over here. And so now my sender, when I actually type in, it will be a UI button. So I can say my X position should be at sender dot frame dot mid X. So it's going to find the middle point. Uh, the middle X point inside of the button and that will be the X coordinate that it returns and then we need the middle Y coordinate for the vertical direction. So I can say sender dot frame dot mid Y just like that. But, and now our CG point for our origin is complete. Now the next thing that we need to do is we actually need to specify the the actual view that's going to appear inside of our popover. So I can say let popover view equals UI view. And you can see that I can use the frame constructor and the frame constructor takes a CG rect object. So if you click here and again do open parentheses, you can choose the one which has a constructor for X, Y width and height. So now you'll be able to set the X and Y position as well as the width and height. So let's say I want my button to, uh, I want my popover view to be um, where it is 32. The size of it is that there's a margin on the left and the right of the button that is 32 and that it is a certain height of, let's say, 100. And then it is 20 below my button. How do we accomplish that? Well, the, so the first thing is getting those side margins. So what we can do is my X position can be set to 32 and my width I can set to self dot view dot bounds, which accesses the, the um, and then dot width, which accesses the width of my screen. And then I can do minus 64. And the reason I do minus 64 is because again, there's 30 on the left side and then 30 on the right side and 30, or sorry, 32 on the left side and 32 on the right side. 32 plus 32 equals 64. Now we can worry about the Y position. Where is it um, vertically on our view? And we said that we wanted it 20 below my overall button. So to do that, I can say sender dot bounds dot um, max Y, which locates the bottom Y coordinate plus 20. And then I can set my height to whatever I want to set it to, which I will say it to be 200. Okay. And now the last thing I want to do is actually before I want to change my background of my view, let's say to make it gray, just for the example. So to do that, I can do self dot view dot background color equals UI color dot light gray. Just like that, that, that one line of code will change our background color to the to the light gray preset. Now I can add something to my pop over view so that it just doesn't show a blank page. So what I can do is I can maybe add a button. I can say let, or sorry, I'll add a text label. So I can say let text label equals a UI label. And I can again use a CG rectangle to specify its frame. I can say that my frame for the X is going to be a zero. Maybe the Y it can be, um, let's just do, I don't know, 80, 80, not 88, for example. The width I can set to view dot, or I can set it to popover view dot bounds dot width. Because if I'm putting this inside of my popover, I want the width to be the same as the actual popover view. 
Then my height, for example, I can just set it to uh, 24. Now I need to set the text on my label. To do this, I can say text label dot text, and I can set this equal to, let's just say hello world. And then lastly, I can set my alignment to center. So um, text label dot text alignment equals dot center. That way it is centered within my view. Now I just have to add my text label to my popover view. And to do that, I can say popover view dot add sub view and then text label. All right, so now the last thing we need to do is we need to create a popover um, object to be able to actually manage this and to show my popover view. So I can say here um, below, let popover, let popover equals popover, just like that. And I can do open and close parentheses. Now, all I have to do in order to show my popover view is to type in popover dot show. And you can see that my first, my uh, first void method that pops up, I can click it, it says show, and then there's a content view and then a point. So the content view can just be popover view. And then my point will be my origin point right over here where I want the popover to start from. All right, so that should be it for my uh, for my popover. So I can run my app, for example, in an iPhone 11 simulator. All right, so it's the build succeeded, which is great. And now we can see if our method worked. Okay, so the button should appear. There it is. And if I click it, you will see that there is now a pop-up button. Now you may notice here that this little, um, the little carrot is showing a little bit over my actual button. So what I can do is I can simply just change my origin point. Instead of being mid Y, uh, mid -Y I could set it to max Y. Uh, that way it actually appears starting from below or this uh, where the arrow is can start below and I can maybe even add a constant to it. So like add eight. So it just adds a little bit below my button whenever I click it. All right, and now you can see that it is a little bit lower, just like that. The code for this is so easy, and look, I can even just tap on the side and it's already handled for me. I don't need to create custom code to figure out how do I actually close my popover, right? It automatically closes, and this is absolutely perfect. All right, so in addition to the uh, into this, you can actually do custom options. So let's say I create an options an options array for my different popover options. I can say let options of type popover option equals, and then I can have an open and close bracket for my array. I can have options such as corner radius. Like let's say I want my corner radius to be 40. I can specify that. And there are so many different options that you can do and they're really cool. Uh, you just have to do comma and then you can add as many as you want. Just like that. You can even change, for example, your arrow size. You can have a certain time that you want for your animations. You can specify all that inside of this options. Now, the only thing that you have to do here in order to configure options in your popover is you have to run this constructor right over here. You can have options, show handler, and dismiss handler. So these are if you want specific actions to occur when your popover is shown and when your popover is dismissed, you just click it and then you can add your code in there. Or just to make it simpler, there is this constructor just for options only. That way you don't have to worry about the handlers. And then here you would just pass in your op options. You would just pass in your options right there. And so now if I were to run my code, you will see that now my corner radius is greater. So you can actually even make circles with this. If you set your width and your height of your popover view to the same thing, and then you say your corner radius is half that height that you put in, it will make a perfect circle. All right, everyone, if you liked the video, feel free to like and subscribe for more content. And as always, thanks for watching.